Hey guys, this is Samad here from DIY King. Well, summers are on its way and definitely temperatures are going to race up. So, in today's project video, we are going to build ourselves a portable cordless table fan by using some of the old computer parts such as these 12 volt fans as well as an old laptop battery. So have a look at how cool this little table fan is. Now have a look at how you can build one for yourself. To start with, I've got 4 12 volt PC fans. These fans are used in computers and you can easily find them from old computer scrap for a couple of bucks. Usually they are in perfect working condition. Each of these fan is rated for 12 volt and nearly 600 milliamps of current. The plan is to arrange them in a rectangular shape with nearly 2 inch space in the middle which will later serve as the compartment for mounting the speed controller. So I roughly arranged all the fans and took the dimensions so that I can cut the pieces for the body of this table fan. Now for making the body for this table fan, I'm going to use 3mm thick MDF sheet. All the pieces for the body of this table fan is cut down using a homemade table saw and later they are cut down to the required length using a hand saw. The dimensions for all these pieces will be provided on Instructables blog spot for this project. So be sure to check out the link that is given in the description below. Now I started to glue all the pieces that forms the base of this table fan. It measures nearly 12 inch long, 2 inch wide and half inch high. Here I'm using super glue which produces excellent joints while used with MDF sheet. To hold the bottom plate I've glued these MDF blocks at each corner of the base. Now to power this table fan, I'm going to use a bunch of lithium polymer cells that I've recycled from an old laptop battery. Each cell have a capacity of nearly 2 amps and have a voltage of uh, approximately 4 volt which indicates that these cells are in great working condition. So I've soldered 3 of them in series which will eventually provide me an output of nearly 12 volt. Old laptop batteries are a great place to find these lithium polymer cells and they almost cost me nothing that way. Usually, the cells having a voltage above 3 volts seems to hold a good capacity as well. I'm going to use two packs that are connected in parallel in order to double up the capacity and thus increasing the run time for this table fan. Here I'm using a simple switch in order to turn on and off the fans. Now both the battery packs are connected in parallel. First of all, the positive lead of both batteries are connected to one end of the switch while the other end of this switch goes to the speed controller.
Later, I connected the negative leads of both the battery packs as well. Now to charge these battery packs, I've added a 5mm charging jack just opposite to the switch and uh, connected both its terminal to the battery pack terminal as well. Later, I drilled four holes in the bottom plate and I screwed it on the base using four cut screws. Later, I glued rubber washers around the head of each screw which will help the base to avoid moving here and there while the fans are running. Up next, I've mounted the fans to the top of the base by the help of two wider MDF sheets. To ensure optimum airflow, I've cut down the portion of the strips that is getting in front of the fan on both sides using a jigsaw. Here I've removed the extra two wires that are hanging out of the fan since they are not useful for our task. Then I've placed all the fans in place and connected all of them in parallel which means that all the red wires are connected together and so is the case with the black ones. This allows me to operate all the fans and regulate their speed by using a single input. Now in order to regulate the speed of these fans, I've decided to build a pulse width modulation circuit by myself. For that, I've designed the PCBs for the required circuit by using the schematic and later I've ordered my PCBs from jlcpcb.com. For the first order, I've got 10 PCBs for $2 which includes the shipment cost right at my doorstep. All I needed to order my PCBs is to upload the Gerber files and check out the options that are given below. That whole process took some time but at the end it was all worth that as the quality of the PCB was just too good for the prices they are offering. So don't forget to check out their website that is jlcpcb.com. The list of the components and the Gerber files for this printed circuit board along with the schematic for the circuit will be given at the Instructables blog spot for this project. The link to that will be given in the description below. For more details about this pulse width modulation circuit and its working have a look at the previous project video 
The link to that will be given at the top right corner of this video. So don't forget to check it out. Later, the input and output terminals are connected to the speed controller. Make sure not to reverse the polarity of both input and output wires. The speed controller is then mounted inside the cavity by drilling a small hole and then attaching the knob to the potentiometer shaft. Now with that being done, it's time to screw all the fans and the rear cover in place. I'm using 2 inch long nut bolts which are of exact length that I needed to get this job done. So guys, if you like this video, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Moreover, have a look at some of my other projects as well. And for more upcoming projects, do subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the link just given over here. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll be seeing you soon in the next one.